Okay, um, ladies and gentlemen, you're all very much um, welcome to the latest instalment of our uh, inspiring player series. Um, the special feature this time, um, the French Connection, where we'll be chatting to Cahol Dwyer, um, Peter McGlynn, Gareth Gilmartin and Ireland national team head coach Andre Molna about the, Nar the Narbonne twinning project, the origins of that, the experiences that the guys are, um, the guys are experiencing at the moment and, and the kind of the plans for the future. So gentlemen, you are um, very much welcome to tonight's webinar. How are you getting on? How's things? Yeah, pretty chilled out right now. Yeah, not too bad, considering. <laughs> and before we kick off talking about France, you, you, you have a training session tomorrow over in Galway. Tell us, tell us a little bit about that, Andre. Yeah, so part of our training, uh, going back to training plan, um, our development officer proposed a nice plan where the referees can have an exam and for us to actually have a match. And I actually like that, that idea because... We can help the refs, we can have our own trainings, and we can see how it works if it's a little bit more organized under these situations. And if everything goes okay, we can plan a little bit more for future trainings or future uh, friendly games. So, sure. And it would be nice for all of us to start meeting again a little bit because it's nice to have WhatsApp communication and such and Zumba. We kind of miss a little bit of contact, you know what I mean? Sport is sport at the end of the day. Well, look, yeah, it's that it's that social element, isn't it? Really, it's one of the, the main strengths of volleyball is that that team camaraderie. Um, so I'm sure the guys are, are be very much looking forward to getting back on court tomorrow. Gareth, Peter, you guys have obviously been in Ireland a lot the last few months. How are you, how are you how are you been coping with the lockdown and, and getting your your training training loads in? Oh, oh good. I've been missing volleyball big yeah. time. Only yeah. one training session since March. Yeah, only one volleyball session since March. So it's just been in gym, nothing else really. Yeah, yeah. Working on the fitness yeah. and strength. Gareth, you've been hitting a few balls on the beach, I've seen. Yeah, the beach volleyball, that was a few weekends. Um, other than that, though, just much the same as Peter. Gym, running on the roads, just keeping busy. Great. So, look, before, before we get into it, I just kind of want to hear a little bit more about, about yourselves and kind of your background if you're involved in a club or how, how you got involved playing volleyball in the first place. So, Gareth, look, you're on screen at the moment. How, how did how did you first get, get involved in volleyball? How did you find that love for the sport? Um, I started out first in sixth class in primary school um, with a few week, uh, weeks training, just getting basics or whatever. And then when I moved into first year in Drumshambo, it sort of started from there when uh, John King, he was the head of the volleyball in the school. Um, and just since then, just kept playing. Just fell in love in the school because it was just, um, it's been such a, like a, it's been down or played in school down through the years. Mm. Um, so it was sort of, and it also ran in the family actually as well. My uncle played, so it was, Great. And Peter, yourself? Yeah, pretty much the same thing. Started in second year at Davis College. Uh, Yola Radon coaching the team. Just went to the Ireland squad when I was in TY. Just started playing Monster Thunder. Just fell in love with the game, really. Great. And Coho, yourself? Well, I've been around it for a long time with my mother, who was training in Clotha. So I've been playing since I was eight or nine, I'd say, roughly. And um, I only started properly playing probably in second or third year. And your sister, your older sister, she would have played. Yeah, she would well, have. Yeah. yeah, yeah, she was a good player. Great. And Andre, what about what about yourself? How did how did you get into to volleyball? So in my neighborhood, there were strong soccer championships. So each uh, each neighborhood had around twenty teams easily. I was, I'm the worst soccer player you're going to meet in your life. You have to be gifted to be as bad as me. And, but I, I do like to jump on the ground. They always used to bring me a goalie. And in Eastern Europe, we have some metallic bars they used to use in the past to clean carpets from dust. 
And at one point, somebody was playing volleyball at one of the sports schools, and they started playing over it. I was around nine. And from four lads, we ended up having a championship of 20 people playing over <laughs> the bar. And when I, when I finished primary school, uh, my father approached the sports school if I'm okay to apply. They, uh, I met the criteria, physical and everything. It's a little bit different than here. And uh, it was all the way up uh, from there. So it was pretty intense afterwards. Great. Um, and and so, so, look, on to, I suppose, the topic of tonight's show, uh, the French Connection and the Narbonne twinning project. Andre, can you tell yeah. us a little bit about how this project came about and the people involved uh, that kind of drove it forward in, in its origins, I suppose? Yeah, look, this was a little bit of... Um, uh, a lot of work from people before before me and the coincidence that I'm actually very fascinated about the French system is very different from Eastern European or Northern American system in trainings. I found some old projects uh, of Laurent because he was nice. I con- after I took over, I contacted him if he can send me all his materials, which he did. Mm. Uh, and I saw that there. Afterwards, uh, Eric contacted me again and I've seen the paperwork between them. And it's easy, I started talking to Eric Marty from, um, from France. Um, he used to be the project manager at that moment in Arbonne. And we exchanged a few emails. Then we had the Skype, not Zoom, we had the Skype meeting between me and him. Uh, after that, I requested a, a Skype with uh, Tristan, which was nice for him to have a chat with me. But to be honest with you, at the beginning, I was a little bit um, skittish. So this mm-hmm. is a big club. We are a small project, <laughs> and I was, you know what I mean. When you think things are too good to be real, you know. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I had the chat with Tristan. Tristan was very open-minded. Uh, then they invited us to go there with some kids. And Tristan, sorry, just for the viewers, Tristan is the the head coach at Nabon. Or He's the he development uh, develop- head coach for development. Okay. Yeah, he's the under twenty-one coach. So he'd be yeah. bringing players and, up basically uh, from the. And uh, from there was a little bit of a straight line. Uh, things coincided with our under 15, under 14 uh, recruitment campaign. Uh, we went in our bond with uh, under 15, under 14 will go mini volleyball by far. Mm. It was a lovely experience. One week of extremely intense things. We built, we made some good friends there. Philip Schneider used to be the coach there, which was one of the best volleyball players in Europe by far. And from there was a straight line, to be honest with you. We started communicating daily on WhatsApp, on Facebook, you know, just exchange of um, ideas a little bit. And at one point, I've asked Eric and Tristan if they would accept a few players to go um, internship to be tested, you know, for them to see what we have. Mm. And straight away, they said, yeah, you know, if we can plan it properly, it's not a problem. So maybe the first time we went was a little bit haptic because it was very new. Yeah. We didn't know what to expect from us. We didn't know what to expect from them because when you go a little bit internship and testing, things are a little bit different. But once we went there, it was nice. You know, we were very welcome. Uh, they facilitated us with extra trainings because it was a period when they weren't training that much. So they put more trainings for us. Uh, the boys interacted a lot there with the coaches, with the players from all age groups. And to quote... Um, Philip, that was a little bit nice when he said, I was expecting you to guys, you guys to come in a nice holiday here and you brought me volleyball players, <laughs> which was, which was, nice a yeah, 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 yeah. was a nice compliment. <laughs> ah, you know, so I'm always telling people that at this level, hmm. people are honest, brutally honest, you know, so it depends how you <laughs> like things, you know, but as long as people are down to work, it's a nice experience. So, so from, Andre, from your perspective, yeah. what are what are the key benefits really of this twinning project? What do you, what, what what's the driver for you as a head coach to 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 really push this program? What what do you see that the squad so look, and, and Irish volleyball is going to get from this? The reality is, from here we are going to get a senior team. So, end of story. From this, it doesn't matter how much we are trying to push in Ireland. The reality is, we don't have budgets to push the senior team problem even the youth team, because the lads are very young. And we don't have time to train five times, eight times, 10 times per week. We simply don't have it. And even when we have six, seven players, good players, they are from all across Ireland. Their training partners are not at the same level. 
And if we manage to send a few players for an internship back and forth, for them to other people to come train with us, the level will go up very fast. The power yeah. example, I think, I think in sport you cannot, it's the highest possible thing. You know, GA players see high level players all the time. For us in volleyball in Ireland, it's kind of, kind of hard to see high level top players, you know, and, and interact, physically interact with them. And I think this, if things go normal, as like go like this, not take not too fast. I think we are going to have a good national team, a senior team in two, three years. That's my opinion. Because them guys that are going over and getting that exposure to high level professionals training four or five times a week. Yeah. Well, there they kind of train 12 to 18 times per week. And I think even this experience for the lads going from four or five trainings to 12, 16, 18, it's a big change. Well, let, look, let, let's jump on to Cahol then in terms of, because you're, you're experiencing yeah. that at the moment, Cahol. And what's the, do you, did you notice the difference? How have you kind of acclimatized to the, the more intense training loads? Um, just a lot of recovery, really. Cold bath, mostly. And that's it. It's yeah. like, the, you have to go hard for the two hours or whatever times allotted for the training. And then after that, it's all recovery from there. So at the moment you you're training, so you're going in, you're doing what is it, four or five times a week, two yeah, hours? Only, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm doing um I'm doing ten hours in total throughout the week because of COVID. Yeah. So, yeah. But if we weren't in a COVID world then that that would be Yeah, it would further. definitely be a, a good bit more. Yeah. And then compared to so say if you were well, I suppose we can ask ask, ask the guy. So Gareth, I suppose I mean, how does your training load in Ireland kind of compare compared to that? Um, it depends. Like every day, I do something different. Like maybe, well, one day I do maybe weights or whatever, and the next day I do a cardio thing, and then mm. every other day it'd be the same. Um, and yeah. do that for the week, really. Okay. So you're getting plenty of fitness work and plenty of strength and conditioning. Exactly. Yeah. But you, you kind of suppose you're missing that on call. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And Cahill, are you obviously you're enjoying the experience? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ten hours a week. Yeah, it's tense. Like um, I'm training with the under twenty one team, and that's very tense. And like, if you mess up, it's a big deal. Like, so kind of getting used to that. There's a lot at stake with that team, if that makes sense. Yeah. So you kind of feel the pressure a little bit more. So getting used to that is kind of the main thing. And how how do you how do you handle that? Or is it just a case of the more you train, the more that it just becomes? Well, normal? yeah. Um, I don't know. So like, it depends on. Right now, I'm finding it hard to translate when I get tired. Translate because he only speaks in French, obviously. So right. if I get tired, I I am not able to fully translate. So I might not fully understand the drill. So he gives out to me for not understanding the drill. So it's kind of getting used to that kind of stuff, like yeah, okay. and teething problems like that kind of. But then what? Like yeah. <laughs> so how? Yeah. So are you? I mean, I suppose really that's that's a whole yeah yeah topic. Yeah. Like how we? Which look at you. We're on to it now, so we'll keep going with. It. I mean, how are you? How are you finding that different culture in general, living in a in, in a different country? Um. Well, the first time at the start of this year when I went over, it was just everything was different. I kind of just threw myself in the deep end, really. And there wasn't like things were planned, but it wasn't planned perfectly. So I kind of just had to figure things out by myself Mm. a lot. But I feel this year now I have kind of more of a plan of what I want to do and what I want to achieve for the year. So I think it's a lot better for me. Yeah. So it's a bit more structure, kind yeah, of. Yeah, a bit more. Yeah, yeah. I know what I want to get out of it. Like. And you, so when you first went over, is it January? Uh, yeah, January. You were, over, you were in school, in French school. How, yeah, I was, How did you find that? Uh, yeah, I found it good. Um, I found some of that classes very difficult, such as the history class, because it's all just, it's complicated French, like, so. It's <laughs> simple as, and then most of the subjects were grand. I'm sure the students were all nice to me. So, yeah, great. And do you feel like uh, 
like, do you feel that like you've noticeably improving as, as as a player from the trip? Yeah, something definitely, like definitely, you, you can yeah, feel yeah. already that you you get. I feel like I'm a lot more um, just stronger. If that makes sense, like I'm able to control the game a lot more. Sure. So yeah. Okay. Um, Andre, do you from from I suppose from a coaching perspective? Um, when you have the when you have the boys with the kind of monthly national team training, I suppose you've seen them every four or five weeks. Uh, is it obvious to you the improvement that Cahol has made from from being in Albon this time? Well, I was following your matches, and yeah, it's obvious. Uh, and the reality is, it's really hard not to improve once you have strong partners next to you. And uh, it's nice. It's nice to see these things because I've seen with the other boys as well. And a funny story is, um, I'm going to mention Lucas a little bit. When Kohal went to Narbonne, Lucas went and asked his father. So I'm allowed to say this. So I'm allowed to go as well to Narbonne. <laughs> so the thing is, it's nice to see that this is one of the main things uh, we are hoping to inspire other players to look abroad a little bit, to look, open their horizons. You know, it's not necessarily Narbonne or this. Because look at it in Austria, just to see that it's possible to go out and achieve something, you know. And if I'm not mistaken, Oshin was saying the same thing, you know, dare to dream a little bit, you know, dare to dream, just push yourself. Maybe you're going to reach your limit, maybe not. But for us, it's only positive, you know. You see lads going from here all the way up in a very short time of uh, period of time, sorry. And it's good, it's, it's good, you know what I mean. It, because then we can plan from a national team point of view, we can plan serious things now, you know. And it's yeah. a good feeling. At least we can start making our tactics and hope for a lot of things for international matches, yeah. Um, there was something you mentioned earlier about the, the initial trip, about the, the, the testing that the guys in Narbonne kind of put the place through. I meant to ask at the time whether we kind of we, we moved on, but I was wondering if you could maybe just give an overview of what that testing included and maybe see if that's something that would be beneficial for the senior schools here or, um, you know, advanced yeah. clubs here that could maybe... Put so, you know what, it, what was funny for this? Uh, because why, why I wanted to go with the boys there? Because I knew that most of them will have the impression that the testing happens on court, which never happens. So there is not even one coach who's going to test players under the age of 20 on court because everyone knows you're going to be nervous. Not a lot of players have that level of experience to arrive at the team and just deliver, you know. The actual testing, and I think I told the boys afterwards, happened in the gym when they tested balance, coordination, uh, the, all the measurements, you know, length of legs, length of arms. Uh, body fat was estimated, but the guy testing them was kind of good, the lad, so he kind of knew what he was saying. Mm. So... Because the equation was very simple. Uh, if you're coordinated, if you are coordinated fit and the height and everything is there, we are going to teach you volleyball. You know? So most of the testing happened when we went to the gym. I don't know if I ever told you that, <laughs> Uh I don't think so. <laughs> that was your actual test. I, uh, so uh, the personal trainer took a lot of numbers there. A lot. He was counting everything because... We had a little bit of fun in the gym because it was fun. But um, that was the actual test. Nobody's expecting when you go abroad, for example, to be able to spike proper. It takes a couple of days for you to get used to it, acclimatize you, especially when you're coming from uh, Ireland, which is a little bit in north, and you go straight to south. And I'm pretty sure all of you felt the difference when you jump. Uh, I know when we were in Romania, going from Transylvania to the Black Sea, you feel the oxygen level is different. So any good coach will know these things, you know. But like I said, coordination, skill level, how you move, how you handle yourself, how you're built, your body mass. You don't have to be bold or skinny, but you have to have a nice harmony in it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because that says a lot about your future development. So um, usually good coaches, high-level coaches look at this. If you have a player, DJ, I've said it in the past, 1 meter 96, let's go like this, 95 they have bony structure at their joints. That means they are going to get taller. So you calculate, okay, he's 196. He's going to put an extra three, four centimeters at least. He's coordinated. He's a little bit strong for his age. 
we have a player here. So, um, so when when the guys are looking at then when when we send the the these the, these boys over there, I mean, yeah. what are what in particular are the Narbonne coaches looking for? Is it that is it the volleyball skill set or is it more the, their coordination and the movement skills first and foremost? So they are gonna, they are looking more at their coordination and volleyball skills not so much. And I'm telling you why. Hmm. They know how we are training in Ireland. They know our we are limited. But at the same time, they look okay. If these lads can play this well, we not so much training. You know what I mean? Okay, yeah, what happens if we... Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And because it, that's very clear from the start. And then, okay, let's see what we have from physical point of view. Because professional level, you have to decide. After the age of 16, you kind of have to decide which direction you're going on court. Not necessarily this one, but which direction. Yeah. And these numbers traditionally... They are very well recorded in all countries. Um, I remember in uh, when I when I was their age, each year we were measured height, body fat, uh, spiking spiking point point blocking point. Um, we used to make um, long jumps. How uh, a lot of countries are doing what the Americans are calling the magic twelve, which is unbelievable hard. Twelve spikes, twelve blocks, twelve just to see if you're constant in your movement. Mm. That doesn't have necessarily volleyball, volleyball, but because if you have a little bit of passion, a little bit of skills, it's easy to teach. Then they are looking at another thing, personality, because they know you're new. They know you are a little bit nervous. They look at everything. How do you react when you make a mistake? Yeah. Are you focused or you go this? Are you starting to blame in left and right or you, you're more concentrated, you know? Do you get too angry? You know, you see those people bottling up. Those are signs for a lot of coaches. And coaches with experience will spot these things very fast. So, so Gareth, Peter, does that, does that give you guys uh, a little bit of kind of something to prepare for, I suppose, when, when you head over there in January? Peter, we'll, we'll come to you first. Um, right. Is that giving you, giving you a bit of guidance to things to, to prepare for? Yeah, it's obviously working hard on the physical fitness and all that just to get ready for it. And you're Not excited? Really. Yeah, very excited to see what it's like over there. See what the lads are like playing at that level. And Gareth, yourself? Uh, yeah, it'll be something different to Ireland volleyball. I mean, it'll be a lot. i say the level, the difference will be huge. That's one thing I'm really looking forward to. Any. But you kind of, I get the impression from both of you is that it's that challenge that's exciting you. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely, yeah. And is that, do you think, does that come from just kind of like competitiveness within to want to kind of prove your, your abilities, do you think? Or is it something probably, else that's driving you on? Probably, yeah. Like, I think all three of us were on the round court were, were really competitive. And yeah, well, I'm we fierce competitive. To, yeah. <laughs> um, but definitely that's one of our driving things. And we always want to do the best we possibly can. And, yeah, and like we're underestimated a lot in Ireland at our level, we're underestimated. So it's just should show what we're like to improve ourselves and just improve the squads, really. Andre, the, the French kind of, the French league will be would be up there, wouldn't it, as a comp, you know, as comparing to, to other professional leagues across Europe. The French, the French yeah. national league would be so French league will be easily almost as Italy and Russian level, so mm. not quite but almost. What's particular about the French and a lot of serious players are playing there is the social protection of the players, which no country has it. So a lot of them have it, but not at the level of the French championship. And that's why the French championship can be a strange championship. When you think you're the best, you can find yourself in Angaped as an opponent. I was saying about Bisset, that plays for Narbonne, which was a major player in the Russian championship and accepted a serious cut in his pay to play in France because of the social protection players get. Mm. So I think that's fascinating because then you have the opportunity to meet the highest possible level in regarding volleyball players, even maybe if you're not at that level yet. You know what I mean? And that's an advantage because if you love competition, you're going to... I just want to tell you, I remember a funny story. <laughs> I was talking with Tristan about Kohol. I said, okay, uh, Tristan, tell me the news. I want to hear it. I, 
I said, well, he plays very well. I like it. He's a very angry pl player. But sometimes, honest to God, I think he wants to eat the opponent on the other part of the court. <laughs> <laughs> You kind I of, said, uh, that's mia, mia culpa. I said, Tristan, that's how I like to coach. I'm sorry, that's my fault. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so do you ever, Cole, just on that, do you ever kind of, uh, do you ever feel, because Andre mentioned a few minutes ago about the kind of, uh, you know, the coach is looking for that anger kind of building up inside and is this play going to explode? Do you ever, do you ever feel that? And do you ever kind of, I, mean, I never feel it towards someone else, if that makes sense. Like, it's always directed, I always expect myself to play the best, if that makes sense. So I'm kind of yeah. really self-critical in that way. So I, okay. if I make a mistake, I really kind of beat myself up. Yeah. But that kind of makes me play better after that, if that makes sense. Yeah, no I just, just get more focused and then I get into a zone after a while. Yeah. So. <laughs> Peter, Gareth, you guys have similar kind of um, thoughts like that, or are you a little bit more, a little bit more relaxed on the court? I try to be as relaxed as I can on the court. If I'm, if I get too much in my head, I lose concentration. Just need to focus on the game, like on yeah. myself. Gareth, yeah, it's, yourself? I'd say I'd be much the same as Peter. Be fairly relaxed, but then if I made any mistake, I wouldn't say it. I wouldn't go crazy with myself, but I know myself, you know, like you have to get this next one or, you know, you put yourself under pressure, not under pressure, but you put yourself under that sort of. You want to do it. Well, like, the drive yeah. to get the next one. Like. Yeah. Well, volleyball is, it's, it's a very unique team sport in that one mistake automatically leads to a point you know you play rugby you drop the ball well, the other team still has to go down the other end and score a try you know yeah. whereas volleyball it's instant and it's which is common obviously in individual sports but not so much in team sports so that team dynamic is um important so i'm kind of wondering guys from your perspective how important it is to have good kind of teammate relationships oh, yeah. on the court but also off the court and, and what you guys do to try and to build that when you're in camp in the squads we're all good friends we spend so much time together in the dorms at Gormanston or in yeah the, we're always joking like we're all just chill always chatting in the rooms and stuff yeah we all get on really well they were saying like they've known each other for what three years yeah so it's you know three years and um, two weekends every or two uh, a weekend every month you know Mm. It all adds up. It's a good while, like so. So, Gareth, you, you're off then in January for for a week. What are your um, what are your ambitions? I suppose in in volleyball or your ambitions. Well, first of all, what are your ambitions for the experience in Narbonne, and then what are your longer term kind of plans in the sport? Um, I'd say experience in Narbonne is to sort of see what the level is like there, and sort of like take back with you what sort of level or sort of level of volleyball you have to get yourself to to be at the same sort of standard as them players um, and then in, as in long term I'd say it'll be the same as every other young volleyballer's dream is to go play at the highest level you possibly can and Peter yourself yeah the same really it's just the attitudes of the players over in Narbonne Hopefully they rub off on me. I can use it over here and improve myself and improve the squads. And just for the future, just play in Ireland like as much as to the highest level and then probably go abroad somewhere to play. Probably not professionally, but just abroad somewhere to like higher level. Sure. Um, Cahill, so the guys are kind of interested then in, in seeing you know this professional environment. I'm kind of wondering, have you had much time in the, the first team environment um, have you had time to kind of train with the guys there or to watch um, yeah I've had a few times not as much as promised because of COVID because yeah. they're trying to keep them away from the youth teams they're trying not to mix teams as much as possible Yeah. so I've only had maybe one or two training sessions in total with them but it's still good to see just the level and how big they are really like they're huge 
like <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, but it's just no. That, I think you've explained it pretty well. Yeah, they're <laughs> massive, you know. <laughs> um, so, I mean, apart from the kind of the physic, the physical side, yeah. What else is? What are the other kind of differences like that, that you've kind of seen? Has anything surprised you, or has, or has nothing surprised you? Um. Well, I think just the level of detail that goes into the technique. Like, I think French play are really orientated on technique. They focus on technique a lot rather than just physical skill, if that makes sense. Like, yeah. they obviously want strong physical players, but if they want more technical players rather than physical, they'd have one physical beast who's like 6'8", six, 6'9", six, minimum, mm. and he play opposite, and then they have like just good technical players that can defend really well or set or hit really well just technically the gifted if that makes sense yeah absolutely so when you say kind of like the attention to detail on the technique is that is that kind of driven by the players is that something or is it very much the coach stopping and starting and really i think, it's, I think it's a bit of both i think some players just just love that kind of aspect of the game like, that's just their bread and butter. And I think the coach is kind of a bit like that. There's an Argentinian dynamic in the squad. There's a few Argentinians. And they're, um, they're kind of technical as well, a lot of them. So it's all just footwork and how to use the block and defence and that kind of stuff. And when you say kind of like the, the, the attention to detail, is there any any kind of... Um, coaching methodologies or any, I don't know, thinking technology that they use to kind of realize Well, yeah, they, they have, um, well, they do use technology, but really it's just do it until it's perfect, really. Like it's okay. not, it's just repetition. Yeah. Well, it's at that level, it's just repetition. Like it's just practice with that group of players. Sure. To make it perfect, basically, in game so you can replicate it. And have you have you played a match yet? I was saying over the COVID situation, the future uh, a little bit. I have played a match with Pre Nacional, and I think we lost that by like one set. But that's okay. it. And then before I played the under eighteen with the under eighteens, and we got to the Coupe de France final, but we weren't able to play it sadly. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. Andre, do you get to do you get to follow the matches? Was following the um, under eighteen their last match. I could see that match before COVID, and um, I know Kohol was judging himself a little bit bad about that, but I actually played very well because me and Tristan talked after that match. You know what? One of the hardest things as a middle blocker is um, setters have a tendency to to be afraid to set you during a hard match, and. Um, I, I was talking to a few coaches here in Ireland and I told them that's not particular to Ireland. That's across the board. So under 18 setters are very hard to find to play in 10 situations with a middle blocker, even if the middle blocker has the highest chance in making a point at that level, you know, because like Kohal was saying, things have to be perfect. The defense has to be perfect. The timing of the setter has to, everything has to be a little bit and at that age, sometimes um, setters have a tendency to be a little bit afraid to play there. But 50% of the job of a setter of a middle blocker is just to scare the opponent. And uh, a lot of people from outside don't realize this. But you were a middle <laughs> blocker, Andre, were you? <laughs> yeah, I, I was a youth pastor, to be honest with you. I was, the, and uh, I I was put on the middle block when they needed the fast attack because I was too short for middle block. For defense, that's it. I was too short. But to be honest with you, it's you, this is this is something that I hope the boys are going to be bring back the psychology of each position on court. Kohal was mentioning about the six foot eight lad uh, as a power wing. If you play professional as a power wing, your efficiency has to be from seventy five percent up. Otherwise, you're reserved because your job is to make points. If you're a left wing. Your defense, like Vladimir Gurbic, our guest, said the same thing. Hmm. If you don't have a defense, you are not playing. doesn't matter how good you hit the ball or block. Setters. Now, setters is a tricky one. Some people like setters who play clean. 
some people like I like setters who mingle the game a little bit, make combinations and stuff like this. So that's that de depends, you know what I mean. I don't mind if a setter makes a mistake during a combination, but I want to see, it, you know. So, but I would like to see if the boys are bringing back that psychology because each position on court has its own uh, psychology and. I think if that is brought back to Ireland, I think that's going to be a big, big thing for us, to be honest. Well, you've stolen my, my, actual, my, my next question. I have noted down there. Like, what, what do you want the guys to bring back to Ireland, I suppose? So you've talked about position psychology. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that you'd like to see them bring in? Bring it's, home? Look, it's like Kohol was saying about the understanding is things have to be perfect. They are simple, but perfect. Um, for example, when you we were teaching the middle block approach or the second, uh, how you call it, the wave attack, when the middle blocker goes and the wing goes next to him. We had players who turn around, run on the line, turn around, go. High level, they go ice skating, three steps and that's it. Mm -hmm. And if, but they are so fast, if you don't look, you're not gonna notice it, you know? And um, if it's done properly, you avoid injuries, you avoid waste of energy. So if, if the boys bring back that simple but perfect game, which is very hard to make, I, I'm happy because I know the other kids are going to copy it very fast. You know, the yeah. first steps are the hardest steps in this direction because it's impossible for the other youngsters if they see the lad, look, spike like this, block like this, move like this, approach the game like this. It's impossible for them not to copy this, you know. So, um, but this, this, these are the most important things. If they can bring the psychology of the position, and like you said, the methodology, you know what I mean? The simple methodology, I'm happy, you know what I mean? Great. Um, and then I suppose, look, I know we're, we're living in a COVID world at the moment, so planning the future and projects is, is very difficult. Um, what are your kind of, what, what are the future plans at the moment? So Gareth and Peter are going in January for a week. Is there anything else in, in the pipeline with this twinning project? Yes, uh, one of the things I wanted to talk to Jose was um, for them to bring the pre-national here or the under-19 here for uh, five, six days for us to stay in Rochambeau. When it's, I, I'm estimating after January. Sure. That's just me trying to be positive. Uh, just to have a mini tournament. I already spoke with um, uh, Adelina's father, Adelina Unguriano. Her father is... Uh, is the manager of a volleyball club. They want to travel as well to Ireland. And I said, if we can manage to make a small tournament of three teams, just to see how we can manage it first. You know, a small step, baby step, but strong tournament. These are strong teams. Yeah. Uh, that, I would like to make something like this, to be honest with you. First, and the most important thing is we actually owe the Narbonne team to <laughs> bring them here. If they were nice to us each time, you know. But this is, this is something, because I think they're going to love it here, Gary. Our squads are at a good level. The boys physically, there isn't such a big... I know some of them might see something else, but the, the difference is not that big. Hmm. You know, I'm looking at our boys through different eyes, you know, and the difference is not that big, you know. And I think if we manage to have some tournaments back and forth, which I really want us to have something, I think that will be something nice for us as well. And maybe build it up from there to something else. You know? Yeah, sure. And just on that, so you mentioned that the Narbonne families. Um, so just for the viewers that are maybe um, aware, so when, when, they, when, the, when the squad went over there, and it was Easter, wasn't it, last year? Yeah. Um, host families basically looked after the guys and fed them and watered them and took them on sightseeing trips. Yeah, yeah. And uh, to be honest, when we had our reception, uh, everybody was fascinated about how beautiful it is. Me and Yonut stopped, looked at each other. I said, do you realize we have to organize something similar? <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, you know what I like, Gary? Once we had a sit down and we explained how Irish volleyball works, what conditions we have, you know, mm. nobody, nobody, was, nobody was judging, you know? So we, yeah. that's something I like. You could see honesty. And I said, look, we can afford this. We can organize this. These are our limitations if we organize something. They just, okay, for us, if we see Ireland, it's okay. We actually want to come there and just enjoy a little bit our time there, you know? Yeah. And I like that. I actually like that. No, absolutely. Um, so 
guys, I suppose really um, to, to, to wrap up, um, Cole, you've been over there now. So you went over in January. It was kind of curtailed because of COVID. You were back after yeah. a couple of months and you went again, August. How long, how long is this, this cycle at the moment then? How, how long are you intending to stay in, in France for? Uh, well, I'm intending to stay for at least this year. Okay. For, um, I'll be heading back for Christmas to see my family. Um, yep. My mom's over with me right now, currently. She's been really supportive through all this in my leave 30 years, so I'm glad that she's here with me, basically, helping me out. Yeah. Great. Um, and then, so, so you're hoping to, to, to complete this season. Is there any way that we can, we can follow the games? Is there, do the games get streamed or anything? Um, that the viewers can, can, can sometimes, capture? not all the time. It's, it really depends, to be honest. Okay. Like, yeah, I kind of have to look into it on, with the club itself. Yeah, okay. sure. Well, if anyone, I suppose if anyone, if anyone is interested, uh, just look Google NAB on volley, and it comes up pretty quickly. The website is translated into English, so um, people can kind yeah. of click on there and and follow Cole's progress. I'm just kind of interested in Narbonne as a, a town. It wouldn't be kind of one of the more um, tourist destinations, I suppose, that people may have heard of. I'm kind of wondering about you know Narbonne in terms of um, how it compares, how it compares to your native Ennis. Um, is, is oh, it's, be- it's actually beautiful. Like it's really nice. It's a real old, old style city. Um, there's a lot of shops, a lot of streets. It's a real kind of community. It's kind of weird in the way that there's fifty thousand, but there's a real sense of community in it. Okay, if that makes sense. Everyone's kind yeah, of yeah. connected, like it. Um, yeah, just it's just a nice place. Like I don't, <laughs> the weather's always nice, so. No complaints with it. <laughs> yeah. So you would it's 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 south, isn't it? So wait, would you fly into Toulouse? Is it would be the closest or Carcassonne? Um, one of those it's Toulouse or Carcassonne because it's so it, sometimes there's flights in Carcassonne, but not that often. They're usually midweek, so they're not really ideal to use like if that makes sense so. yeah sure well look i suppose once once france gets on the green list hopefully eventually if people yeah, wanna... what is a good news Definitely. regarding this i know that peter is interested in physiotherapy and such um all the sport colleges are on that coast and narbonne is connected to all areas it's now because you were asking about tourists narbonne is um, what i noticed when i went there german people French and Spanish. This, I think it's a place where everyone goes in all your actions and they are coming back to rest there. Yeah. It's really, from tourist point, it's a very interesting point. Uh, and uh, like I said, for our boys who want to study sports, sports science, and in the other subjects, because all the, all the big universities are in that area. You have from Lyon, Montpellier, all that coast. Yeah. It's there. All the, and everyone knows the south of France is all the sport, you know, from for football, rugby everything okay paris a little bit but most of it is in south and even from academic point of view i think it's worthwhile for a lot of uh, the young players to actually look if they can apply to a college there because physiotherapy is extremely high level physical education it's extremely high level uh high level development sport extremely high level i never heard somebody finishing there and not having a proper job afterwards Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the reality and I think this is a good aspect from us to research a little bit and expose it to the parents you know so um, probably the boys have to learn French <laughs> but uh, that's not so bad <laughs> you learn a foreign language so, uh, I know Peter is interested in physiotherapy if I'm not mistaken yeah Garrett wants to be a teacher now Garrett yep so uh, have any of you, I'm, I'm actually curious, have any of you think about doing a work placement there? Because there are a lot of interesting uh, academies, uh, foreign academies, English academies there. That would be interesting. I don't know, that's my uh, own thing. Well, look, I suppose that the guys are all at the age where education is is vital. Um, well, it's, it's, it's more than vital, it's, you know, it's, it's imperative. So anywhere where really you can, can combine the studies with, volleyball can only not only enhance themselves on court but off court as well and I suppose that's my final question for Cole 
Look, we know you're growing as a player. You, know, you said yourself, it's been noted. Do you feel any benefits from kind of just a, a personal kind of um, note in terms of kind of, I don't know, confidence? Look, at the end of the day, as, as, a, as a young guy kind of going to a foreign country to play volleyball and go to school, it's not, it's not easy, you know? Um, and I think yeah. a lot of people kind of in awe of you. And do you feel that self-growth off the court as much as on the court? Um, I think when I first came over for the first month, I found it really difficult. Like I kind of, I shut off from a, I kind of stopped talking as well. I kind of just shut off and did my own thing. But after that month, I was grand. So mm. I, I think from there, I kind of developed across the board. And I think that's where I started to grow. And now I'm starting to like really push on with school a lot more now. Yeah. Right, well, look, fair play to you. Absolutely, more power to you, buddy. Um, Gareth, yourself, you're you're excited. Obviously, look, we we know you play volleyball. Any opportunity that you can that you can find. Um, what are your kind of thoughts on on, on the coming months? Are you going to be playing with with Galway? Is it um, in the in the yeah. national league next week? Galway, yeah, Galway in the Premier, yeah. And how's training going? Ah, good. Yeah, it's, it's just kept busy, like whatever. Obviously, when you're not playing volleyball, you do your own bit. Yeah, so it's just keep busy and keep going. And then, Peter, yourself with, with Monster Thunder. Well, Monster Thunder, I'm playing in the league this year, so I was, and I'm staying in Marble this year, so I was looking at joining Net Force, but they're not back training yet. So okay. I'll see what happens then. Great. Well, look, keep in touch with the guys. I'm sure they'd be more than happy to, to, to get you down there playing a bit. Um. Look, thank you very much for your time this evening. Andre, is there anything anything else you want to kind of add before we wrap up? Yeah, I, I wish to thank, uh, thank the parents. You know, everything we are doing and we've done so far is mostly because the parents were supportive to us. And even for a program like this, which is a very new program, I think was, uh, like Kohal said, the leap of faith for mm. a lot of them. And thank you for the support, you know, and I hope we are not going to disappoint regarding these kind of things, you know, and how we are doing things. Absolutely. Cool. Well, look, gents, thank you very much for your time this evening. Guys uh, watching at home, um, thank you for, for logging in and viewing and for your continued support of, of this programme as they go from strength to strength. Guys, have a, have a good evening and we will catch up with you again shortly. You too. Good luck tomorrow yeah. as well. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Cheers. Catch you later. Okay.